Welcome to the Hitachi Rail factory in Newton Aycliffe. That is the video. We're going around a factory. But first we've got to get to the factory, of course, and it's not without its points of interest. I'm here nice and early at Darlington Station for the biggest anniversary in rail history. It's 200 years and a week, which makes it one week bigger than all the people who were here last week, and therefore better. It's quite blustery this morning, but brighter than I'd expected. Storm Amy came in last night, but I slept through it. It's just built different, I guess. Darlington is certainly a hugely impressive and grand station, although the front of it is a little bit dilapidated, it feels. I mean, part of that is just all of the detritus from construction laid out on the floor. We're now gonna get a train to somewhere that's even more historic, but much less grand. So this is Hayington, unless it's Hyington, or Hyington, Hyington. It's the first station on the planet. This is number one. This is station number one. You might ask, how can you have one first station? It's not even that there were multiple stations and the train just left from one of them first. This just this existed before any other station. It used to be, and we're talking very, very early days, trains would stop basically wherever and passengers can just get off, albeit down quite a drop. I guess they must have thought it might be easier to have less of a drop. It caught on and they were like, oh, we should probably have more of those. There is not much here today, apart from one of the oldest remaining signal boxes in Britain, and because this is the first station, the first station building. This building actually hasn't been in use by the railways for some time. It has been a pub in the past. It's a little bit shabby and derelict, but my understanding is that Hitachi Rail are going to do it up. So that little bit of railway heritage will be safe. It kind of feels entirely right that the world's first train station, <coughs> rail station, people will have my guts for that. The world's first rail station is just sort of in the middle of nowhere, entirely unspectacular. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that it's vaguely mundane. Ah! So what's the first thing you do when you get to a giant train factory? Well, I want to see trains getting made in a factory in the northeast of England. God knows, God knows I with lots of trains. If you've ever wondered what a train looks like when it's terrified, wonder no more. What I want to know is, what time does the train to Porridge leave? I don't want to miss it. Even more exciting, I'm going to be riding Locomotion 1, the train that kicked off the modern railway. Or a replica of it, anyway. It's like Dolly the Sheep, but with wheels? Right, so I'm taking a little ride on Locomotion 1, and I'm going to act as I imagine the people of 1825 might have reacted to be on such a, an innovation. You're very lucky to be on this. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Normally they're in the carriages up there. There was about 300 people in those on the first day. Yes, so I, I'm in the 1825 equivalent of first, first class. class. Yeah. How have the celebrations been so far? I think it really captured the imagination to really see that first journey. People lined the route. Yeah. We're looking to the future now. We've got Women of the World in a couple of weeks. Yeah. But I have to say, the North East welcomed the world in 1825 and it welcomed the world again last weekend. That's a, a, a well rehearsed line that. <laughs> well, a... I hope you enjoy the bone shaker of a first class trip that it's... would have been in 1825. The trains are a lot more comfortable now. I don't know, it feels a bit like being on the DLR in East London. <laughs> the main problem with being on Locomotion 1, I know, woe is me. The main problem is I can't actually see it from the outside. So I'm um, just looking through a little gap in a window. It's pretty cool though. I'm with Alan Strickland, MP for Newton, Aycliffe and Spennymoor. How has it been welcoming the world to the North East <laughs> to celebrate 200 years of the modern railway? No, it's been brilliant. And the reason it's been so good to have people here is, you know, railway all over the world started here. In 1825, locomotion number one was put on the tracks for the first time, yes. which of course then inspired the spread of passenger rail, not just across Britain, but across the world. What do you think is the most important thing to make sure that Newton, Aycliffe continues to be at the forefront of innovation? Well, we've got world-class um, technology 
technology here. We've got obviously trends moving out of the production line onto the original stock and Darlington Railway, which is uh, fantastic. But the second thing we need, you know, is a new generation of engineers coming through, which is one of the reasons why I've been really keen to encourage Hitachi to do this open day, to invite families. And then the third and final thing is to make sure that obviously the factory has got, it's got the right people, it's got the right talent, people are inspired to work here. Then it's got the orders, because this has to work as a commercial entity. But of course, as we know, because of the way rail works in Britain, the Department for Transport controls uh, how train orders are, are made. I brought the Prime Minister to this factory, I brought the Chancellor of the Exchequer, the Transport Secretary was here with me just last week. So it's also my job to bang the drum to make sure that as we move towards Great British Railways, we can improve the way that the government buys rolling stock. Yeah. Finally, throw yourself forward 100 years, the 300th <laughs> anniversary of the modern railway. Yeah. What should it look like? Rail travel will be faster, it'll be greener, it'll be really open to everyone. It will still be an absolutely crucial part of British life and a crucial part of society, how we connect with each other, how we work, how we travel. In the meantime, as a local MP, I'm going to keep banging the drum for the factory, banging the drum for rail, yeah. and as a secret train nerd, um, <laughs> we'll continue to really push the importance of rail manufacturing yeah. um, in Newton Aircliffe. So these are the painting booths, essentially, and there's various steps, like sanding and metal sanding and other bits, but I imagine that Newton Aycliffe, because they are making the new trains for EMR, this must be the uh, UK's leading consumer of deep purple paint. I've been joined by Rachel from EMR on one of your new trains. Can you tell me about what's coming? This is um, the Class 810 Aurora fleet. We're really excited. We're getting really close now to actually uh, the fleet being delivered. This train is more modern, more spacious for people. We've got um, about 137% increase in luggage space. There's uh, about 19% more seats per five car coach. So bigger capacity, yep. things like better mo mobile connectivity. So uh, the glass that we're sitting by actually amplifies mobile phone oh, wow. signals for people. So 2019, I started working when the contract was awarded. Mm -hmm. um, so we've worked through Hitachi um, throughout that time, working on that specification, making sure it works for EMR and for our operation um, and having that input into sort of design reviews, using our branding colours mm -hmm. to make sure that that's reflected, um, you know, in the interiors of the train and the exterior livery, which lots of people today have commented on how much they love that purple livery. Yes. When are we hoping to be able to come on one of these auroras. Yep, so the plan is we'll be rolling this fleet out um, into 2026, but have the whole fleet delivered early 2027 as our entire intercity fleet, which will be great. I think it's quite smart that for the turntable here, the button controls, the red buttons, are the ones that stop it, because when I see a big red button, I want to just slam it. I want to slam it and I want to turn those tables. But actually, the safe thing to do is that the red button stops it. You, you've beat, you've beat my internal psychology. Well done. As opposed to my external psychology, what? Get her. What's she done? Oh, together. If anybody's ever told you that railways are boring, they're right, actually. Right, I am on the Inspiration Train, which is like a little museum on rails. And here, I need to build a bridge. Uh, move over Brunel. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something that's never been done before because it doesn't work. We can, we're gonna ignore that. I think we need Brunel back. As you can see from this thermal imaging camera, I'm dead behind the eyes. The Inspiration Exhibition Train is currently touring Britain until next summer. Of forbidden sweets. I can't, I can't. You're only supposed to put the bloody door on. Does that work? I don't think that works. I could become a much more dangerous version of the bus auntie. Train boy. I'm out front of the factory with Doug, who is the head of UK communications at Hitachi Rail. Doug, you're a few hours into this open day. I imagine a sit down is needed. I thank you, yeah. I have not sat down since 5.45 this morning, but it's been totally worth it. I mean, the smile on everyone's faces, it's everything we envision in Morgue. And I think 200 years of the railway, it's a really special moment. Yeah. It's a once in a generation thing. So to do something special, to open up the factory for the first time, it's been brilliant so far. We often say it's the jewel of the crown of Itachi Rail in the UK. So we have 22 facilities, but this is our manufacturing facility. Yeah. located right next to Stockton Darlington Railway. That heritage link is not lost on us. It actually was a big factor for yeah. us coming here. We do welding here, we then do paint here as well, and then we do 
full assembly here and we also do testing. So we do the full manufacturing capability of a train from start to finish here in this factory. You've been here for 10 years. How are trains differing now? How do you expect trains to be different in the coming years? Yeah, every time we take on a project we try and expand and grow and I think the next bit that we're really, really excited about is the batch of trains. Yeah. So we have received an order for nine intercity tri-mode battery trains. This facility will be the first one in the UK to build battery trains. So we're building the batteries in Sunderland and Gateshead and they're being brought here. What do you hope that rail transport in the UK around the world might look like in 100 years time? I mean in 100 years time I would like to see a high speed network around the UK. We're starting it right now. We are still travelling on the infrastructure that was built you know, 200, 200 years, years ago. ago. Yeah. The other thing that we're already starting to see is how digitally integrated trains are. It is starting to change with digital signalling. More trains running closer together. That is going to have a more like metro type service. That's what they have in Japan. You just turn up. Actually, rail becomes the choice for domestic travel. So yep. we don't get on planes, we're getting on trains. And if you give people the right, the level playing field and the right choice to do that, they will do that. That's why it would be great to be in 100 years time, I think. Do you ever start learning about a topic and realise that you're only really scratching the surface and there is just so many branches of knowledge that you have no idea about? That's what I'm getting because there's so many technical bits and pieces around here that people build their careers around and it's only through connecting all of these people together and their skills that you can build a train. Oh, and on the subject of building a train... Ed, you've got a massive LEGO model railway. S somehow I do, yeah. It is very big, but it is also very like intricate at the same time, yeah. so I've had to do a lot of small details. How long does it take to design a layout in the first place and then to set it up? Alright, so design it can range from a few hours to 30, 40 hours. Building, 3-4 hours per board. So each board is about yay by yay. So yay by yay board. Yay by yay, yeah, that's a, that's the official measurements there, folks. Yep. What's your favourite detail in this setup? It's probably just the little flowers about to add that pop of colour and make it less just green. If we're looking at the station, I think my favourite detail is going to be the little kiosk. When I've won the lottery, this thing will be a lot more complete, I'll say that much. I hope you've enjoyed this trip to the Hitachi Rail Factory up in Newton Aycliffe. Um, I am dizzy with excitement and also a bit dizzy because of the fairground ride that I'm sat on. I am nearly 30 years old. It's time to leave. Thank you very much to Hitachi for inviting me up to the open day. I will humbly accept a trip to a Hitachi factory in Japan if, if, you, if you need. You know, it's hard work, but somebody's got to do it. I'll do it. As a little coder, I thought I'd drop by Hopetown Darlington, a transport museum about the history of the Stockton and Darlington Railway, immediately adjacent to North Road Station behind me there. And in fact, this museum is centered around the restored former station building of North Road Station. I always feel a little bit iffy about showing too much of museums and stuff because I think they'd probably rather you went to have a look around and I highly recommend it. This is probably one of the best museums I've ever seen, to be honest. It's immaculately laid out. There's so much interesting stuff going on. So rather than going into much detail, I'll just show you an overview of some of the interesting sites that you can see here. But until next time, Bye. Hang on, no, wait. This, I just stumbled upon this. This is the oldest railway bridge in the world still in operation. Scone Bridge, just down the road from Hopetown. And this used to be on the five pound note. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, there's this hype thing now. You can like press a button down there and give me hype and then it like appears in some list or something and makes it more likely to get spread around. So yeah, if you could give me some hype. Hype me. Haha. <laughs> Bye.